Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you. Opposition boycott cast shadow on India's new parliament inauguration. Pakistan's economic growth slows, foreign exchange reserves drop. And Nepal's PM they held to visit India, border issue on agenda. And now for all the details, India's new parliament is set to be inaugurated this weekend amid a political row as around 19 opposition parties, including the Congress, have said they will boycott the ceremony. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will on Sunday inaugurate the building, the centerpiece of a $2.4 billion project that aims to reconstruct British colonial buildings in the capital centre and give it a distinct Indian identity. But opposition leaders say instead the president, the highest constitutional authority, should inaugurate the building. The ruling BJP leaders have accused the opposition of playing unnecessary politics. Given that the president is the one who convenes parliament, who prorogues parliament, who dissolves parliament, who calls elections and so on, it would be extremely uh, unwise in the view of many people for the president to be left out of inaugurating the parliament that may be our building for the next hundred years. Sanskrit Bhavan ka udghatan ek aitihasi ka usar hai. Jo ab ya kishvi sadi mein dobara nahi aane wala hai. Aur is subha usar pas sansar ya rastpati ko bibad mein lane se kishi ko bhi bachna shahiye. Takniki dhrishti se ya sansar ka koji satr nahi bulaya gaya hai. Ya to sansar bhavan ke udghatan ka samaro hai. Atah hume samvaidhanik satr और सार्वजनिक समारोह का अंतर समझना चाहिए। The inauguration and the ongoing makeover of the heart of New Delhi, based on Indian culture, traditions and symbols, comes ahead of the 2024 general election. The government has said the old parliament will be converted into a museum. In a fresh petition to the Supreme Court, Pakistan's opposition PTI party chief Imran Khan has urged the top court to declare the arrest and trial of civilians under the Army Act during peacetime against the constitution. The development came after a Pakistani court on Thursday handed 16 civilians over to the military for trial over their suspected involvement in violent protest following the arrest of Khan on May 9. Khan in this petition has said trials of civilians in military court is a clear violation of the constitutional guarantees of due process. He has urged the top court to form a judicial commission consisting of its judges to probe the May 9 incidents. Pakistan has cut its economic growth estimate for this year as it grapples with record high inflation and acute balance of payments of prices. The situation has left the people shattered. A report. Pakistan's National Accounts Committee has cut the country's GDP growth estimate for the current fiscal year to 0.29%, from an earlier estimate of 2%, with a contraction in industrial growth underscoring concern of an acute economic crisis. Battered by an acute balance of payment crisis and the worst political turmoil in years, Pakistan has been trying to reach an IMF deal with a stalled $1.1 billion loan. But the measures, such as increased electricity and gas tariffs, have taken a toll on the common public. Pakistan Pakistan ki tariq mein aisi badtarin mehengai kabhi bhi nahi hui, jis tarin kuch saalo mein hui hai. Aisa mehengai ki har cheez mehenga kar diya, jo cheez 10 rupay ka ta, wo 50 pe pounch gaya hai. Jo 50 wala ta, wo 200 pe pouncha hua hai. Aap ko socho, ye thele wale, hum jaysay gharib loog, دیاری دار لوگ یہ کس طرح کھاتے ہیں ایک ٹیم کھاتے ہیں ایک ٹیم بھوکا سوتے ہیں یار کیا بولے ملک کا تو بیڑا غرق ہو گیا ہر جگہ جاؤ مہنگائی اتنا ہے اور دیکھو بازار میں رش بھی نہیں ہے اس مہنگائی کے وجہ سے روزگار ختم ہو گیا Pakistan's currency has also depreciated to a historic low as part of IMF conditions to bring it in line with the market-based exchange rate the central bank said on Thursday the country's foreign exchange reserves have dropped to $4.19 billion, barely enough to cover a month of controlled imports. 
Afghanistan has reported its third case of polio virus this year in Nangarhar province, which has affected a 30-month-old male child. Earlier this month, the country reported its first death due to a polio case after a four-year-old child became the victim of the crippling disease. The Taliban's acting minister of public health, Kalandar Ibad, has called on polio vaccine workers to intensify efforts to prevent its further spread. Polio can only be prevented and eradicated by vaccinating children and practicing good personal and environmental cleanliness. Afghanistan earlier reported 56 cases of polio in 2020, 4 in 2021 and 2 cases last year. Reports suggest that Afghanistan and neighbouring Pakistan are the only two countries where polio remains endemic. Dubbed as the Everest Man with 28 ascents of the world's tallest mountain, the Mount Everest, Kami Rita Sherpa has said his summits are not just for beating records but for promotion of tourism in his country. The 53-year-old climber received a grand welcome at the Kathmandu airport upon his arrival from his latest summit. His mountaineering journey began in 1992 when he joined the expedition to the Everest as support staff member. His latest climb was the second time he had scaled the mountain to the summit within a week. Home to eight of the world's 14 highest peaks, climbing is a key earner for Nepal, where about 500,000 people are employed in tourism. So far this year, Nepal has granted permits to 1,046 climbers for 24 peaks, earning the government $5.6 million. Nepal's Prime Minister Pushp Kamal Dehel, who assumed the top office in December last year, is likely to begin his much-anticipated India visit from May 31st. Talking to Kathmandu Post, Nepal's Foreign Minister N.P. South said preparations for the Prime Minister's visit are in the final stage. He said both sides will discuss host of issues, including water resources, trade and commerce and border issue. PM Dehel earlier in the parliament claimed he will not undermine the national interest during the visit. Nepal's ties had strained with India in 2020 after Kathmandu published a political map that showed the three Indian territories as part of the Himalayan country. Officials of both the countries have agreed to resolve the border issue through diplomatic means. An underwater tunnel aquarium expo in India's Hyderabad city showcasing different varieties of fish is grabbing the attention of people belonging to different age groups. Organized as part of a summer festival fair, the expo has over 3,000 fish of both marine and freshwater environments. The organizer of the event said the idea behind the expo was to bring a sea view in Hyderabad and give a thrilling experience to people who usually watch these fish virtually. Having started in April, the expo will conclude in the last week of June. The first time in Hyderabad, so that's why I, I came here for the, to, what, the, to see the visit and the, to the, the exhibition and everything. Yeah, this is nice actually. This is a new thing in Hyderabad, so I'm feeling good. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.